In the previous lesson on finding the engram, we looked at a possible mechanism for how two events close in time might be allocated to overlapping sets of neurons so that the engrams, in a sense, are shared. And this would help us understand how the memory for one event might trigger the memory of another event that happened close in time. In this lesson, we'll look at a little more detail about the biology of how that process might be going on. So let's imagine we have a target cell here. We've got two inputs. And event one comes along, uh, represented by the high frequency activity in this input here. So we're going to get a synaptic tagging here at this synapse. We'll have early LTP. And because the target cell is responding to episode one, we're going to have gene expression, including CREB. We'll have the production of plasticity-related products, and they will migrate throughout the cell. Now, the plasticity-related products will be captured by all tagged synapses. That's this one and not this one over here. So we'll get late-phase LTP, making lasting uh, changes at the synapse here to strengthen that connection. But in addition, the CREB activity will be elevated for a while, and that leads to an increase in excitability of this cell for a short time. An increase in, its, in excitability, in a sense, lowers the threshold for future LTP. So now when episode 2 comes along, it will have differential effects on these two neurons. So here we have the original neuron. It is enjoying elevated Krebs activity, which means uh, it's a little bit more excitable than the neighboring uh, uh, nearby neuron here. And so when we get activity in this input, yes, you'll get uh, tagging at both synapses. So we'll get the the early processes, but because the target cell here did not respond to activity of episode 2, we're not going to get the late phase LTP here, but we are going to get the late uh, phase LTP here. So LTP is going to happen on the original neuron because it enjoyed elevated excitability. It made, it made the threshold for new LTP lower, so we can get late phase LTP at the same neuron as was responding to episode 1. So this same neuron then becomes part of the engram for memories 1 and 2. So the story then is that episodes that occur within the plasticity-related product time window will tend to activate overlapping populations of neurons, thus linking the memories. And what makes this target cell capable of responding to the next event is that sustained level of excitability due to sustained Krebs activity due to the initial processing of event one. So neurons that take part in uh, the engram for event 1 are more likely to take part in the engram for event 2 if there's a short time window between those events. Now, we've just been discussing the allocation of neurons, but there is a phenomenon called synaptic allocation as well, and this can, can occur at nearby synapses. So studies in hippocampal slices show that LTP at one synapse on a dendrite increases the probability of LTP occurring at nearby synapses within 10 micrometers or so. So if LTP just happened here, uh, that increases the probability of LTP happening here within uh, a short distance of the original uh, synapse here. And the idea is the time window is around 10 minutes and, and it does not seem to involve structural changes. Rather, it appears to be a reduction in the threshold for LTP. So again, LTP at this synapse, uh, some biochemical events are happening here that is lowering the threshold for LTP at a nearby synapse. It could be that local proteins are activated, um, or at the activated synapses might be shared with nearby synapses before any of the plasticity-related uh, products arrive from the nucleus. So this is a local phenomenon. And so what that means is events that are happening within 10 minutes of each other could be allocated not only to the same neurons, as we saw earlier, but also to nearby synapses. And this is called synaptic allocation.